Hey guys, it's Quinn, uh, and we're going to talk about our really neat double drift, drift school. Uh, we've run lots of drift schools. I'm the guy who wrote the drift school for you. If you have run or done one with us, thank you for hanging out with us before. If you're new, welcome. Um, we're doing a special drift school day. So this is going to function a little bit differently than we normally do. We normally just run a beginner day. Our beginner day is kind of... A uh, really good intro to drifting. We figure out donuts and controlled donuts, not loose ones. And when you finish your donuts, you're given a badge. You're rewarded with a badge that says, hey, you did it. You're the best. Um, it kind of looks like even like this. Ta -dang. So you get rewarded a badge. These badges are not to be taken lightly. You can only earn them when an instructor feels that you have. That's it. I've had people say, hey, can I buy the stickers? No, those are only available for you if you earn the skills. And so you'll earn one for figuring out how to do controlled and consistent donuts. You'll earn one for learning figures of eight. So a donut connected to a donut the other direction. You're learning transitions and how to maintain a slide. After that, you'll do your full corner drift. So you'll slide one whole full, four, full corner, I should say, using the four parts of a drift, the setup, the initiation, the control part, and the exit. And then you'll take all those skills and put them together and connect a peanut. You can kind of see it. Let's take a look here. Kind of see it like this. So we're gonna have our first session of beginner skills. It's just gonna happen at our donut stations. Um, and so here's where you're gonna learn donuts and figure as of eight. That's gonna be our morning session, or our first session of the morning, I should say. Our second session, well, it's going to be our peanut area. You're going to come in. You're going to wiggle around our peanut. <laughs> uh, there's also a second station where you can learn your full uh, full corner drifts. And then for those of you who are still focusing on donuts and figures of eight, we'll have a station open here for you to do that as well. This actually is going to be the length of one of our regular drift schools. You are not getting less time than you normally would. It's actually the same amount of time. But after that, we're adding in an expert section. So this is new to us. These are skills or tasks that I've uh, written for other drift schools that I've run in other places. I just haven't run them at Capital Drift. And so it's new for us and it's new for some of our instructors. And so it's a bit of a test day. We're excited to try it out. But it's also a very busy day. And we'll talk about that in a second. Those of you running our expert day... Well, let's take a look at what you're going to go through. We've added some badges uh, that are specifically for experts because we've added some skills that are specifically for experts. Let's talk about the first half of the day. These are poorly drawn, by the way, but <laughs> let's take a look anyways. So our expert skill section is we're going to start out with our first badge, which is our proximity badge. You'll see it on the left here. It's uh, a figure of eight, but it's a proximity type of figure eight. In the beginner section, you're going to get consistent, smooth figures of eight, and the whole goal is just to maintain the slide. It's not about being perfect with control, but that you can keep the car sliding. In our proximity stuff, well, the idea now is that, yeah, it shouldn't be a challenge to keep the car sliding. The real challenge is putting the car where you want to put it. So you're going to put your booty up against the cones and ride the cones. You'll then bring your nose down onto the inner cones. You want to be able to do a figure of eight on the outside proximity and also do one on the inside proximity. It's a front and a rear. You'll earn your badge that way. We're also going to do a stretch. What this means is you're going to start sliding. You'll, you'll pass by the initiation cone. You should already be sliding past this, but Partially through the corner, there's going to be a shutdown cone. In a lot of drifts, uh, you'll either run out of gear, run out of power or RPM, or you'll just kind of run out of momentum. Tightening a drift is always so much easier than, it, than opening one up. And so to add more skills to our experts' repertoires, we're forcing them to learn how to open up. Once you pass the shutdown cone, you can't use the throttle anymore. You're not allowed to use it. You need to figure out ways to stretch that drift. That's how you're going to earn your stretch badge. In the afternoon, or sorry, in the second expert session, which is at the very end of the day, we'll have 
two other new skills here. Let's take a look. So we're going to have what's called the versatility badge. This badge, and we can even take a look at that guy. <laughs> Uh, this badge is earned by being skilled in different, where is my versatility? There he is. <laughs> uh, skilled in different entries. So I can, I'll sit with like a lot of different people and they like drag the handbrake or they always clutch kick. The problem is that this one is going to be a no handbrake, no clutch kick entry. For some of you, that's a challenge. For some of you, it isn't. Um, but that means you'll easily gain a badge if you can do it without. For But the idea here is that you have variations and options to learn how to entry. Um, and it'll improve your competition runs, but it'll also just improve uh, your situational um, versatility. There we go. <laughs> our last skill is our escapist skill. It's an interesting one. You'll be drifting Big Bank along Lego Wall. Uh, people who are entering our expert class should already be comfortable with driving on Lego Wall, hopefully. It's a long drift, either top of second gear, depending on your gearing, or third gear. Um, and the idea is to parallel park at the very end of it. That's not a new thing. You've seen that lots before in other like skill sets or um, drifting competitions, but the thing that's a little bit different is you're not allowed to hit the cones. It's really important that you don't hit the cones. And so if you maybe pick the wrong line or have too much momentum or can't get the car rotated correctly to get into the parallel park, then it's not okay to hit the cones. You need to find a place to escape. I really don't care if you parallel park in the box. That's an extra check mark. You did it. What matters most is that you don't hit the cones. You find other open areas to move to. And this is going to earn you your escapist badge. Let's talk a little bit about the structure of the day. The structure is going to be a little bit unique to double drift day. We've taken a full drift day and stacked a second one on it. It's a big day. And our instructor is going to be working really hard. Um, and so I need your help as well, I, even if you're a participant. Our day is going to be um, hopefully well sorted. <laughs> I don't have the staff, nor do I have the time. And I word that very specifically. I really don't have the time to tech you in in the middle of the day. That just doesn't work. I can't stop what we're doing, what's happening. And so I need everybody, whether you're driving in the morning session or in the afternoon session, to show up in the morning to get teched in, to go through our driver's briefing. And the big part is to get paired up. <laughs> this graphic is unfinished and will be <laughs> input soon. Uh, I just noticed that. Uh, yeah, and so... Uh, what's going to happen is you're going to have a partner, much like a reading buddy in high school. You'll have the grade nine hanging out with the grade 12, and there's going to be an exchange of information. This is helpful for our staff, but most importantly, this is helpful for our drivers. Uh, not only does it build a new connection, but as an expert, this is your opportunity to be welcoming to other people, not to be selfish, but to welcome somebody else into the thing that you enjoy. The goal here is to exchange information. Our experts are not to teach the beginners. That's our instructor's job. Your expert position is important in the morning with our beginners because you need to exchange information. If they are, are not sure what the best way to jack their car up, if they don't know how to get their car set up, or if they're just feeling nervous or scared or overly excited that's your job as an expert to kind of stand in and go hey man let's chill out let's do this let's get the car ready and we'll go over here um it's actually not helpful if the, if the experts teach you don't need to teach you're not required to do that that's the job of our instructors you just need to teamwork and i'm going to under underline that word teamwork i want you to teamwork with the beginners in the afternoon the the driving position switches the experts will be driving the beginners are going to be hanging out and that's also very valuable seeing somebody else operate a car uh from the inside is so much more helpful and you as an expert need to be welcoming for that beginner to be in there and you as a beginner need to be brave and hang out with them 
Uh, as a beginner, you can even work with the instructor and say, I felt that they did achieve the goal. I was sitting in the car. It felt really good. You're As a beginner, you're not there to teach. But the idea here is to build community. Uh, often when you are a, a beginner, you are there with either a spouse or a friend. And sometimes that's actually worse. You're trying to impress uh, a loved one and usually that goes poorly. Or you're trying to impress somebody that you really look up to. Some of the times the worst thing that can happen is to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend in the passenger seat with you because you're really trying to show off to them when really you just need to focus on you and learn. So the goal here is that the experts are, are welcoming in that way and that there's a good exchange. So that's kind of how our day is running. If you're curious about registration, uh, to answer your questions, you are paying per driver. So if you are bringing one car for somebody to operate in the morning, well, they're essentially paying for their day. And that even though you're using the same car for the afternoon, that's a different drift day. That's a second drift day. That's our double drift day. And so you're paying per driver, you're registering per driver. Um, drivers, uh, whatever, you register for so a beginner or expert that's the session you're driving and you're not driving in both i'm sorry it is a, there are two separate days you're there to teamwork to help other people as well as learn yourself too i hope that kind of answers your questions about what's happening and where, what's going on um if you have further questions, you can send myself a message. It's at speedhero.ca on Instagram or Quinn Howling on Facebook, or you can send it to directly to Capital Drift. You'll see the Capital Drift website, uh, www.capitaldrift.ca. We're Canadian. Um, uh, or you can send it to their Facebook page. Uh, I'm down to talk about cars. If you ever want to send me messages or anything like that, that's totally okay. Uh, but the big thing is have fun. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for hanging out and hopefully this answers your questions. Bye.